Uh, Ty, definitely. What a, what a special day he had. You know, probably something he's dreamed about his whole life, putting a Penguins uniform on. And I'm sure mom and dad were in the stands. I didn't get to see um, Troy, um, but I'm guessing he was here. So, yeah, that was that was fun to watch. I'm sure he'll never forget this. And we're, we're glad we, we brought him into the organization. So we're looking forward to working with him and trying to develop him into a National Hockey League player. Um, there was a lot of good performances out there. And, and I think I touched on this the first day I, I met with all you guys. It's we don't want to evaluate the kids, but it is tough not to, you know. You know, there are a lot of good, you know, Dominic Simon, you can see his good skills and hockey sense, Connor Sherry's quickness. Um, I thought Anthony Angelo looked good, big, tall skater, continues to work on that. He's a marathoner. So you, you get excited about all our, our young prospects that are going away, basically stash them, put them on the shelf for about three or four years and uh, see what you have. I thought Jake Gensel looked very good as well. So you can just see, you know, one of the criteria we have is you, you got to have hockey sense to play. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of guys out there with good hockey sense. How much do you have to tell these kids to maybe put the brakes on a little bit in terms of the contact or the competition of that in order to maybe avoid some injuries? You know, the whole the whole week is, is really uh, worked on um, or built on competition. You know, we've got an award ceremony tonight for all of them. We've, we've Everything we've done, we've had, had had points attached to it, whether it was that game, whether it was a shootout, whether it's you know your body fat. And I think I touched base on that earlier, because um, along with hockey sense to play in this league, you have to be able to compete, and you have to understand what compete is. Um, compete for 50-50 pucks, you know, even coming in and you know doing more pull-ups than the guy next to you. That's that's a competitive person, and that's what we want. So. Um, that is a huge part of what we believe in and what our players need to have. If they don't, it's this league's hard enough to play when you have real good, when you have a lot of talent. Um, but when you, you you lack that competitiveness, it makes it that much harder. What did you make of Daniel Sprong this week and then especially today? Well, he likes to shoot the puck. <laughs> you know, he likes to shoot the puck, and I don't. I I obviously see why he, he can shoot the puck very well. Um, so. You know, our job is to continue to develop a mindset of, you know, sharing the puck, give and goes, find space, play with, you know, get yourself in a position just to allow your best arsenal, your shot, to, to, to take take place. So, you know, trying to help him find space and um, and be able to use that, that weapon of his. Is there an expectation for him this coming season where he might play or what he might do? Well, you know, he's a – he's – he was our first pick this year, as you know. Um, he's a guy that we'd probably like to, to get you know, his name on a contract. And I'll touch base with his agent to, to go over all that. There's no rush for that. But no, he'll go back and play for his junior team. He'll come in. We'll give him the same experience that all our other 18-year-olds have gotten in the past. Um, go back, kind of understand what he needs to do and how he needs to the mindset to develop, uh, work with their coaches uh, closely. You know, that's you know, with Mark Recchi on board and development side, it, um, it, it, it's very helpful, you know, so we can we can have more eyes and hands on our prospects. So that's how it works. He'll go back and, you know, it's just kind of expectation wise, go back and push yourself to become a better hockey player. It's the first type of game situation Anton Logan's had in many months. Mm -hmm. How important was it for him just to get in the, albeit a control situation, but a, but a game situation? Uh, it's, 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 I'm sure he had a lot of fun out there. Um, I'd like to kind of talk to him about coming down the left side, cutting to the right side with his head down. You know, if if if, if Patty Sexton was on the, the other team, maybe he would have popped him a couple times, like he popped Sprung there. Um, but yeah, uh, it's the first competition he's had for a long time. Um, he played six games last year for us. That's it. So I'm sure he had a lot of fun. He's got a ways to go. Um, he's a great kid, and he's he's been he's been a lot of fun to work with. So our job and goal is to, to get him become a regular in the American Hockey League lineup every night, be consistent. And if that, uh, if he's if he's able to, to get NHL games this year, great. You got Rust out there playing on the left side. Is that to prepare him for a possible, you know, spot there? You're taking time? way too much into it because I need him <laughs> to play on the left side. We had a lot of right-handed shots out there. Um, and he's the one guy that I felt, you know, could handle that. And I would rather put an older guy in a situation like that to feel a little more uncomfortable than one of our young guys. Well, that says something then, doesn't it? That he's not completely uncomfortable on the left side. We believe in versatile players. We really do. You should be able to play 
either position. I like the fact that if someone asks Brian Russ what position he plays, I'm, I, I hope his answer would be forward. Left, right, and if you need me to play center, I'll play it. He doesn't complain, but he's a versatile player. He's, he's someone that we're going we're gonna to definitely give a shot to, to make this team. So, um, and his versatility is a big um, asset. Prospects did a lot of stuff off the ice this year and some different stuff too, you know, like rowing and the community events and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Were you happy overall with the way that they, you know, conducted themselves? Oh, every, the every year, you know, I say the same thing at the beginning, mm -hmm. how you represent this organization, how you represent yourself. Mm -hmm. um, character is a huge part of what we look for in players. Um, you know, it's just who we are as an organization. So um, with that being said, they understand what's at stake. You know, is it worth it? Is it worth taking a chance to, you know, step step over the line somewhere? Um, it's, we wouldn't stand for it. Um, I'll talk to them tonight. There's still one more night. Um, but knock on wood, we've never had any problems. And there's a lot of underage kids in there. <laughs> Do you have a status on Mark and Tony? Anything no. Again, like the other guys that you didn't see, it's July. So why push it? He wanted to skate, but it's like, why do that? Why put him back, set him back maybe a couple of weeks when there's no need to do that? We know him as a player. We know um, what he's capable of doing. We know he wants to be on the ice. We also know that he's got two months, month and a half left of the summer to, to, to rehab. Is there it's anyone a fully out played for the black team, but it would have been 6 nothing black. No. <laughs> <laughs> was, was he was he a difference making player for you in this thing? Honestly, he should be. Like yeah. he's, if we don't expect him to come in here, that's why he's here. Um, to 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 do what he does, and Derek's got you know he's committed himself this summer to his conditioning. He's he he moved from Saskatchewan to Toronto. He's working out with Gary Roberts, and that says a lot about the kid. Um, again, it's still July, but you can see. To your point, maybe. Maybe this would have been different. But um, Derek's got. Does he seem comfortable starting to break out, getting it out of his end? Sure. Decision making. Yep. No, he's. Those are things uh, in July you want him to be able to do. Right? It's July. Simple is best. Simple is effective, and he did that today. He, when, he, when he moved to the puck, good things happened. When he tried to stick handle through two or three guys down below the goal line, he figured, he figured out pretty quickly, too. It gets stripped off your stick. So those are the positives and negatives of, of something like this and see what he can get away with, what he can't moving forward. Um, his number one thing right now moving forward is con continue on his conditioning. And he's doing a real good job of that. So I can't wait to see him come September. Tom, anyone who launched himself into the conversation for that fourth line that maybe he hadn't thought of to this point this week? You know what, we've, over the last two years, you know, coming into training camp, um, one of the things that I think is probably disheartening to a two-way player that's trying to make an NHL club is seeing 13 one-way contracts. Mm -hmm. It's disheartening, you know. So we've come, we've come a long way here, and we're we're looking at what we call competition spots, where that's what our week here is all about. That's what we are as a, an organization. We're a competitive organization, and why not allow these kids to compete for that spot? We do it on the call-ups. When, when our AHL coach has gotten the calls, who's playing the best? So you reward success. Um, and it drives, it drives athletes. So it pushes everybody else to, to continue to compete for those spots. Um, I think it's a great thing. So if you have 11 and 12 one-way deals and you know they can carry 13 forwards, it, it says something. It really does. You know, it, it gives someone a chance. All, all players want is an opportunity. And when you, when you can do that, I think you, the, we'll have success.